Hare Krishna! My name is Giri Dari and welcome back to my channel. And today I want to talk to you about overcoming fear and attachment, which are two things which just destroy our well-being, just derail us from our goals and make our lives in generally miserable. So if you think that's interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's really important you know, to keep the channel going, to get the message out to more people and to share if you can. Thank you very much. So overcoming fear and attachment. So the first thing we have to understand about fear and attachment, let's talk about fear first, because we're going to see how fear and attachment are actually totally connected. But let's talk about, let's start with fear. What happens with fear is the first thing is you'll notice your mind is in the future, right? Think about all the you know, I'm sure you've gone through some scary situations in your life. I mean, I think all of us have had something, right? You know, some more dramatic than others. But if you look back in your life and you try to see yourself, you see that there's no fear about what happened, right? There's some horrible things that might have happened, but you're not afraid of them. You know, they might make you, might make you miserable or depressed or something. But you'd only be afraid, fear would only come in if there was something you did in the past that you're afraid that, you know, it's going to come up in the future. Like somebody's going to find out about something you did, maybe, or, you know, but, or, you know, like something went wrong and like, oh, this might happen in the future. But fear is only something that happens in the future. It's only when your mind travels to the future that you can experience fear which is one, something to keep in touch with. So now, what is that fear though? Let's, let's, now we have to like, let's unpack this a little more. My fear in the future is because I'm fearing that something will happen in the future which will attack, which will destroy, which will put in danger something that I'm attached to. So fear will always connect attachment. Let me explain. You're afraid, you've, you've decided that something is essential for your well-being in the future. And this can even be to the point of like staying alive in this body. Because remember in yoga, the first thing you learn is that you're not your body. And remember the Bhagavad Gita is spoken in a battlefield. So Arjuna is very much like, okay, I can die any second here. You know, it's going to be a brutal war. So even if it includes like dying, but then the dying is a kind of attachment. You're attached to having this body, but you're not this body. So whatever you say, oh no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm attached to having this job and I may lose the job. So people, you know, a lot of people get afraid of losing their job. But why are they afraid of losing their job? For one thing, they haven't lost their job yet. So they're afraid it's going to happen. It's in the future. It hasn't happened. And two, they have assumed, they have created an attachment, they're writing out an attachment that they need that job. Because they decided, like, I can only be happy, I can only be me, I can only be whole if I have this job. So that's what attachment means. Attachment is this false idea where you falsely attribute anything, be it a a thing, a position, a person in your life, you falsely attribute whatever situation, thing, person, as being essential and necessary for your well-being. You, 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 you create this view of the world like, okay, without that thing, I can't be happy. You know, I, I'm, I'm just going to be miserable, I can't be me, I can't be happy. And that is false. And so that's what we're going to start working with. With yoga, when you start reflecting, when you start analyzing your mind, you can start looking inside, looking at these attachments, and you can actually work them out, slowly dissolve them with your intelligence to think, I don't actually need that. That's one of the first things Krishna says to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. The yogi doesn't need anything or anyone. The yoga tells you that you're actually an eternal, blissful soul. You actually don't need anything in matter. This is 
everything in the universe. There's nothing here you need. You know, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras famously ends with Patanjali saying that once, you know, the state of Kaivalya liberation is achieved, the yogi understands that material world has no value. No value. He uses the word zero value, no value. So actually matter, there's nothing here you need because you don't even belong in matter. You're an eternal, spiritual, blissful soul of unending happiness. You've always existed, will always exist. There's nothing here you need. So any attachment is an error. And an error that costs you, that brings suffering to you. It brings suffering because you attach this need or something in the surface, in matter. Again, is it a thing you want to buy, a person, a situation, a job, whatever? And you think, oh, I need that thing. And then obviously you start getting afraid because whatever you attach yourself to in matter will naturally unavoidably bring suffering of fear because it's not you. It's external to you. And you know that everything external to you is not in your full control. Even if you have, oh no, I, this thing I really like, and you put it in some huge vault, you know, you lock it away in some giant vault and underground with security. But you know that, you know, you've all seen the, the, the movies where you know, they, they, they they managed to rob any vault. So there's nothing that you can, you can't stop. Maybe you're um, going to be a powerful dictator, you know, and nobody will touch you. But they will, you know, dictators get taken down, vaults get broken into, people die, situations. There's nothing in this world that's untouchable, right? Everything in matter is subject to change. Everything is impermanent. This is a great, you know, important meditation in spirituality to meditate on how everything in matter is impermanent, right? That's obvious. That's just like a childhood level obvious thing to know, right? So everything's impermanent. So if you, this, if you create this false concept that something is necessary for your well-being, then you, you're going to be afraid you're going to lose it. The fear will arise. So from attachment, fear arises and then you know and then you feel like anxiety and then you you know you can't function properly you can't be happy as krishna says you know without peace how can there be happiness right there's no peace anymore so the trick then is that when you feel fear go deep you know don't just stay in the surface you know, on that unpleasant feeling but go deep and really ask yourself whoa, whoa whoa wait a second here what am i fearing oh i'm fearing death i'm fearing death of a loved one i'm fearing financial troubles what is it shame a lot of people feel like oh fear of losing their prestige or their social standing lots of things right so go deep and try to like, because sometimes it's like lots of things, but try to find out like, okay, what's this, you know, start with one. What is the main thing? What's the first thing that comes up when I think of fear? Like, what am I fearing? I'm fearing this. Take that thing and then, you know, cultivate wisdom. Get that thing and put it out right in front of your consciousness and say, wait a second. What? I mean, is my life really, if I don't have that thing, my life is really over? I mean, what, what am I saying? Does that really make sense? That's why one of the techniques that you'll see people suggesting is like, start, you know, meditating on the worst thing that can happen. It's a very good, because that just brings it out. Okay, it's the worst thing. You lost your job. You're, you're, you know, you're sick. Get the worst thing you know, that can happen. And then, okay. And what do I do from that point onwards? You know, yeah, how is that the end of my life? I mean, I'm still alive. I'm still got all these other things going on. 
because you know in yoga is telling you you're an eternal soul at the very least you you've died a million times before it doesn't bother you now so even if you die again it's not going to bother you now you know when it happens it's done so like what is there and then you start just trying to break away that knot, try to undo, they call it a knot, they call attachments knots. Try to undo that knot of attachment. And at least, okay, you know, yeah, sure, of course, you know, of course we don't want these things to happen, right? I mean, who wants to be sick? Who wants to be like, you know, in financial despair? Who wants to be, you know, having their image destroyed in public? Nobody wants that. Fine. But life goes on, that's the point. It's not that bad, you know, it's, there is still life. I mean, you're still you, you still have, you know, an eternal soul, bliss is inside you. This is all impermanent anyway. Everything was going to be lost anyway. So why not, you know, get it, go deep, go deep inside you and develop that spiritual knowledge of your eternal existence of what really matters beyond all matter. Anartha Nivriti. No. Just go beyond. You know. Shunya Artha. Zero value, Patanjali says. Shunya Artha. No value in all of matter. So that's it. That's how um, you can slowly overcome fear and attachment. You can work, the more you develop your spirituality, the more you develop your spiritual outlook, the more you develop your spiritual self-image, understanding who you truly are, the more you will see how you will overcome situations which before would fill you with anxiety and fear, and all of a sudden you'd be like, oh, I didn't even experience anything. You'd be like surprised, they're like, okay, that was no big deal, you know, like, You'll go through these things which before would destroy you, but now you'd be so much, you'll be, take it in your stride. And, it, you know, I've experienced that myself and my students, and you can too. So let me know if there's any questions. I'd love to hear from you. Please comment. And thank you very much. May the rest of your day be wonderful with lots of peace and love. Hare Krishna.